Let's look at another example. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, Paul addresses the sisters here, but the point of, uh, uh, to be made about uh, our clothing is the same. It says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, In like manner also that uh, women adorn themselves in modest apparel. <coughs> modest apparel. That's what I read in this passage. Women are adorning themselves with modest apparel. Men should wear modest apparel also. With shame fastness, that is having a sense of shame, covering the shame of one's nakedness, as described in Revelation 3, we will see more momentarily. He says, uh, with shame fastness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Then in Revelation chapter 3, in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 18, when the Lord speaks to the church at Laodicea, he says, I counsel thee to buy me of uh, buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint your eyes with eyesight, that you may see. Now, you look at these passages, what do we learn? That we are to wear our clothes in public. We are to dress modestly. Are we to wear a certain color? Should we wear red or should we wear blue or should we wear green? Well, that's neither here nor there. That's your choice. If you want to wear a yellow shirt, see, I text Lloyd. I said, Lloyd, Lloyd, wear your yellow shirt. I'm wearing a yellow shirt. No, I didn't. I'm just joking. <clears throat> no, no, the point is, if you want to wear a yellow shirt, green shirt, whatever, it's neither here nor there. But what is bound and what is obligated when we study these texts is that we wear modest apparel, decent apparel. The problem with our world today is that God has spoken very plainly that we're to dress modestly. There's no particular style that we're to wear. Whether you wear khaki jeans or blue jeans or, or uh, blue uh, blue dress pants, whatever, let's, let's neither here nor there. But what is bound in the text is the principle of modesty and decency. And yet what do we have today is that people have no respect for what God said, and the theory and the thinking is, well, may I not be cool and comfortable? Well, how is being half naked being cool and comfortable? People say, well, may I not, uh, may I not uh, uh, burn up by wearing too many clothes? You know, I, I hear that a lot. People say, I'm, bur I'm burning up. I've never seen anybody catch a fire. Have you? Never. People wear their clothes. They don't catch a fire. Maybe 90 degrees outside, 100 degrees outside. And actually, after it gets over 100 degrees, because you go into some of the countries <clears throat> where it's really hot, you actually wear clothes to protect you from the heat. You put on clothes. You don't take off clothes. You put on clothes to protect you from very high temperatures well above 100 degrees. That's, that's the solution. Because God has made a mechanism to keep us uh, cool. It's called sweating. It's called the heat of evaporization. That is when liquid goes to a vapor, it's a cooling process. And so when you sweat, the water uh, evaporates and that cools the skin, which then cools the, uh, the blood and keeps the body at, uh, at, the, at the temperature that it's supposed to be. But, but what God has taught us in the Word is that we dress with modesty. And yet people come along and they want to reason vainly and falsely that they can uh, disrobe and, and you know, may not be, you know, kind of be with society and go to the public swimming pools and, and run around in my colored underwear like everybody else. Well, no, wait a minute. God says we are to dress modestly. Colored underwear. That's what the modern swim suite really is. It's just colored underwear. You just change the color, you change the name, but it's just underwear. I mean, I've asked people this question that <clears throat> if, if uh, you know, the, the, the promote and, and try to justify the, the, the modern swimsuit and go to the public swimming pools and the issue is not swimming, the issue is not being in the water, uh, that, that's not a problem. But I've asked the question, well, suppose somebody 
come into your bedroom by accident and you were in your underwear, what would you do? And, like, oh! and we, we'd try to hide, we'd hide behind the door, we, we'd grab a towel and we'd try to cover ourselves. Okay, well that would be sense, that would be common sense. I mean, that's, that would be kind of a natural reaction. But then if you change the color and the name, well, you go to the public swimming pool and just walk right out like it's nothing. It's not so. It, it, it's the same. And modesty and decency and the sense of shame would prevent. I, I remember before I ever studied what the Bible said, I mean, I, I would go to the public swimming pools and, and all that with your swim trunks and no shirt and all this stuff. And it's like, I always felt naked back then. It was just still, I had that, that sense of awareness even within myself that I just sort of felt naked, but everybody's doing it and, and, and everybody says it's okay. And so you, you try to convince yourself that it's okay, but God pretty plain that we're to have modesty and to cover the shame of our nakedness. Somebody says, yeah, but that revelation, well, that's talking about spiritual. Thing. Yeah, that's true. It's talking about a spiritual application, but it's drawing it from the physical realm. If it's not true in the physical realm, it wouldn't be true in the spiritual realm. So, when it says to, uh, to have white raiment that you might cover the shame of your nakedness, that, well, that's what we're to do, cover the shame of our nakedness. 